I think they've been around longer than I have. I actually bought material about 10 months ago because I wanted to create them on my CO2 laser. CO2 lasers don't like metal. But the Aurora Light is a fiber laser and it does a great job not only engraving this material but cutting it as well. Fridge magnets, today on LaserNug. Welcome back. Fridge magnets. If you think about it, there's almost an unlimited number of small companies or medium-sized companies in your community that use fridge magnets as a means of getting repeat customers. It's a proven method, been around forever. Lawn maintenance folks, landscape companies, real estate agents, HVAC, heating and ventilation folks, appliance repair folks, handymen, journeymen, renovation companies. Fridge magnets are a proven method of getting repeat customers for years to come. I wanted to offer that service out when I had my CO2 laser, but it's a magnetic material. Not only the top coat, which I believe is a brushed aluminum, but the material for the magnet itself is made of metals. And boy, the sparks start flying. I'm not saying that you can't do it in your CO2 laser. I'm just suggesting it might not be safe because not only are those sparks of flying when it's trying to engrave the top, but when you go to cut that magnetic material, it gets just as bad, even if you mask the top of it with paper. So I gave up on it until the Aurora light showed up. Not only does it do an excellent job at engraving the top layer, but it cuts it as well. Here's the material I'm using. The material I've been working with is made by Romark. It's called Laser Mag. It comes in three different colors. I believe the top layer is a very thin coating of brushed aluminum, but hey, I'll give you my settings today and then let's burn a fridge magnet. Here in Lightburn, let's just run down to my materials library. This was another type of material that was not in the base library that I was able to import from Thunder Laser USA, so I added it myself. And I believe I added it under aluminum. Yep, there it is. I come down here, I've just titled it Magnet, one millimeter. And I've got two settings for you. I've got a cut setting at 50 millimeters per second, 100% power, 50 kilohertz for frequency, one pass, no curve offset. To engrave it, I've got 6,000 millimeters per second at 25% power and a frequency of 75 kilohertz. My lines per inch is 1,000, scan angle of 45, and one pass. Bidirectional fill. Let's add a cut layer to this. And we'll just for ease, I'll make that green. I'm just going to center it. So I'll grab my inside, press shift, my outer layer, and I'm going to come up here to target, and that'll put me in right square in the middle. I'm going to come back and I'm going to group this together. There we go. And I'm going to shrink it a little bit. Just a little bit. Get it down to about three inches by two inches. There we go. I'm going to highlight my red layer. I'm going to highlight engrave and I'm going to assign my engrave to that. Then I'm going to come up. I'm going to highlight my line layer and come back to the library and I'm going to assign the cut layer. We have our settings. I'm going to click laser. I'm going to plug it in, hook it up to the computer, turn it on, get it all fired up. We're going to throw some material in there and let's burn our first magnet. Press the on button to fully engage. Because I'm going to be cutting material today, I've just taken an old quarter inch piece of plywood, scrap plywood, because I don't want to mar or damage my work surface. The machine on, I'm just going to press the start button in light burn. That'll allow it to start framing. We'll place our material, get it set up, focused, and then we'll create a fridge magnet. I've turned all the lights off so that you can more easily see the LEDs, the focus, as well as the framing dots. 
And for today's video, I'm going to leave my door up because I'm going to disable the safety switches, but I'd highly recommend you always leave your door closed when you're engraving. We have a focus dot. There's my frame. Just going to grab a piece of material, slide it into place. And the first thing I need to do is just make sure I'm in focus. So I'm going to use my up and down arrows to try to bring these two focus dots together. I'm going to slide it into place. I always like to use my focus tool because my eyes aren't that good anymore. And let's just slide it under here. That's what I thought. There we go. That's better. Perfect. Slide our piece of aluminum magnetic material here. I'm going to disable the door switches. There we go. It's flashing red. Let's start our engrave. That was a 31 second engrave, done. As I'm finding with most metals now, I just use a damp cloth with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol just to get the debris off. And that's it. That is one beautiful clean engrave and a nice clean cut. Normally I would do my fill before my cut that's always better with most materials, but she turned out beautiful. This laser mag is sold in sheets, just like regular Romark is. But a couple of things I wanted to point out. These are reasonably easy to cut, so you may want to cut down the larger sheets into more manageable pieces to put through your fiber laser or the Aurora light. If your supplier is like mine, for a fee, they'll cut them down for you to whatever sizes you need. But you'll have to determine how that cost comes into play with your margins. Totally a business decision on your part. If you are looking to try the gold laser mag, I found a couple of interesting differences. Not sure why. The gold has a much thicker layer, almost like a plastic or a silicon coating on it. The Aurora Light will in fact engrave it and cut it, but you'll see there's slight lifting on what this plastic coating is, which for some reason the silver coating doesn't have. And if you're doing a lot of engraving on that three by two or whatever size or shape sheet or magnet you're making, you may find that this layer starts to lift and puff up. I was kind of surprised that the Aurora light actually goes through that plastic layer and engraves the metal underneath it. And it doesn't damage that plastic whatsoever, but it will definitely start to lift it. So that'll wrap it up for today. If you've got the Aurora light and you want to give it a try, order up some of that laser mag, or if your supplier has a similar type material, and give it a shot in the Aurora light. Thanks so much for sticking around today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found it informative. Have a great week with your families. Please be kind to one another, and I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNug. Cheers.